It's been one year now since China's Hong Kong security law was passed. Beijing says it will bring stability to a city that was home to massive democracy protests. The law criminalizes acts of subversion, succession, collusion with foreign forces and terrorism. All can be punished by life in prison. Critics say the legislation gives Beijing the power to silence critics and punish pro-democracy activists. DW's Phoebe Kong has met one of the few young activists in Hong Kong still speaking up. Writing his politics and his love of Hong Kong into his skin. They'll be with Wang Yat-chin even in the darkest days. I hope they remind me of the beliefs I started with, even if I'm jailed in the future. Wong started the group Student Politicism last May, just after Hong Kongers heard about the national security law. At 20, he's one of the oldest in the group. They're as young as 15. There's some of the few still visible on the streets. Many other groups are gone. I decided not to go to college last year. I wanted to dedicate myself to activism while I was still free. Now, many political influencers seldom speak in public. People fear they could be caught under the national security law, especially with it being so uncertain. We feel like we have to step up, especially when prominent figures are either in jail or in exile. Wang has been arrested four times in the last year, twice just this month. Marches are banned under pandemic rules. He and his group hand out leaflets instead, but it's enough to get him into trouble. The pressure is intense. He knows national security officers are watching him. He doesn't go to sleep until 7 a.m., so he's awake at dawn. That's when police arrest people at home. He's part of what Beijing says is an extremely small minority that the national security law targets to preserve stability. Stability brought by the national security law is just an illusion and is built on people's fear. There's no room for further retreat. What if even the terms freedom and democracy become taboo one day? I won't compromise on my speech. He and his group support those already in jail. They take supplies to protesters behind bars. Hong Kong's future is more important than my own future. When the political prisoners are released in years or decades to come, I don't want them to return to a worse Hong Kong, a Hong Kong without Hong Kongers. Many say we are the kids chosen by the times, but I think it's we who have chosen this era. The symbols on his skin state his certainty. The tattoos are messages of defiance to his future self. And our correspondent Phoebe Kong joins us now from Hong Kong. Phoebe, you have followed developments there in Hong Kong for the past year and long before, of course, too. What has changed since Beijing's security law came into effect? Well, 117 people were arrested uh, over the past year. Um, many of them were uh, opposition politicians, activists and journalists. The youngest one was only 15 years old. And so more than half of them have been prosecuted so far. And since the implementation of the law, protests have been uh, almost completely deterred. Now, although the authorities say that uh, the law only targets and affects an extremely small minority, as mentioned in the report, um, but uh, like its impact is actually much far-reaching. It reaches into uh, many aspects of people's everyday lives. Say, um, we have seen uh, a significant retreat of uh, and self-censorship among the media. Apple Daily was just uh, pressured to shut down last week. And uh, other than that, the government and schools are now uh, restructuring the curriculums to implement what Beijing defines as national security education. And even arts and cultural sectors. Uh, new rules have been set up to censor movies and books from public libraries. So the law um, has really largely changed the uh, atmosphere on the ground that people are getting more cautious, if not fearful, about their expression since then. 
Now, Amnesty International says that in one year, the law has put Hong Kong on, quote, a rapid path toward becoming a police state and creating a human rights emergency. Phoebe, what does this mean for rights activists? How are they holding on to any hope in this situation? Uh, well, to be honest, like, we have spoken to many activists and people involved in activism. They admitted that there is little room for them to um, like carry on street activism on the streets and because of the tightening grip of Beijing. And so they have to resort to other ways, uh, maybe not on the streets and other forms to support the jailed protesters or, or even just to keep some of the cultural elements of Hong Kong, hoping there will be a chance for them to fight back. Phoebe, thank you very much. That was our correspondent, Phoebe Kong, in Hong Kong.